What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, this is Overlanding Now, and today we're gonna get into discussing the rigged ultra swing tire carrier that we purchased for the Subaru Outback Wilderness. Um, this has been another item that I have gotten tons of questions about, and again, I don't mind answering those questions, but if there's a way for me to answer all of those questions in one video versus three or four times a day, I'm going to attempt to do that with this video. Um, what I wanna talk about is how well we like it, um, its durability, its ease of use, how the installation was, what attachments we have, so on and so forth, because this little modification is something that I have grown to love, but there are a few drawbacks. And those are the things that I think are important for you guys to know if you're in the market to purchase any type of spare tire carrier. With that said, let's get into the rigged ultra swing. First things first, what I wanna discuss is the installation portion of this. Because any item that we get, we install pretty much ourselves unless we have help from somebody like we did with the Ironman 4x4 lift. But predominantly, it's just myself and my wife and we figure out how to install these things. And having a good set of installation instructions is super important. And I will say, with this rigged Ultra Swing, it's kind of a mouthful, um, with the Ultra Swing, we're gonna just stop there, it was extremely easy to follow the instructions. Now, it did take me about two hours for me to get everything put together. And that's more so because there were a lot of components that I ordered that are above and beyond what comes with the rigged Ultra Swing. If you were just buying the, uh, the tire carrier itself. So that is why it took us so long. But in installing this, and I have been asked this question as well, I don't know if this is true for all Subaru Outbacks, but on the Outback Wilderness, underneath um, or just behind the hitch mount receiver on your Subaru, there is a small pinch weld that pinches the old spare tire area. So it's where that tub is. And that pinch weld, that seam, goes all the way around where the spare tire would traditionally sit. Now, in order for me to get this to fit, I had to bend that pinch weld back. Because the way the rid, rigged Ultra Swing works is it has a um, two angles, two pieces of angles that are iron. I'm not explaining this exactly perfectly, but it's two wedges. That's the word I was looking for. And those wedges come together and there's a bolt. You have to have a long extension for your, your ratchet or, or a, uh, an impact, and we use an impact, and it goes in there and it pulls those two wedges together and that's how it seals and keeps everything connected. And that's how it stays really tight. So in order for us to get that in and to seal everything properly, we had to bend back those pinch welds. Now, not everybody's gonna be willing to do that, and that's totally fine. I mean, we had to cause damage to the vehicle. Nobody's gonna notice, but I know, and now you know. So in the event that you wanna put this on your Subaru Outback Wilderness, you have to understand that you are going to need to bend that pinch weld back in order to get this to fit so you can get all of your attachments attached to your vehicle the way you want it. Now, prior to me purchasing this, um, I was under the impression that there was no way I was gonna fit a 245, 65, 17 tire in the spare tire compartment. Since purchasing this, um, I have found that if you air your tire literally all the way down, you can get your 245, 65, 17 to fit. At least I've been able to but I'm too deep at this point, plus I have a bunch of other gear under there, so I'm not even worried about it. So that's the installation portion. A couple of things that I thought you might want to know. It's designed with that wedge, and I'm probably not explaining it well, but there is a wedge, and when the bolt gets tight, this wedge tightens up, and that's what tightens within the, the receiver for your, your tow hitch. So it all compacts down in there. Um, the design is really good. It hasn't came loose yet. I've had it on for a couple of hundred miles now, and I haven't had to tighten it up. But it is, uh, it's just different, and in order to make it fit, plan on bending something on your vehicle. Now, as far as the price goes, now I'm gonna preface this next portion 
by saying everything is really expensive right now, but regardless of inflation or any of the economic factors, this tire carrier is by no means the cheapest version. Um, this setup that I have now is over $2,000. So just to carry a spare tire, uh, your spare tire seems a little bit expensive, but there are some factors that I want you to consider. I don't get paid by rigged. Rigged, if you wanna pay me or you wanna talk something, give me a call, um, shoot me a message on Instagram or an email. But the Ultra Swing, I added a lot of attachments, but beyond that, it's made in America, it's engineered in America, it's assembled in America, it's shipped out of America. Now, I just think that is something to consider when you talk about how much an item is costing. Where are you getting it from? Who is the people that have their hands in between you and the product? Because a lot of the products we buy do not come from America, they come from China, and all people do is purchase them, put their name on it, and sell it to us for a markup. I know this because I was going to start buying rooftop tents by the bulk, but I did not because I just don't wanna be involved in it. But that's what these people do. So to have a company that is manufactured in America, engineered in America, designed in America, all of that matters to me. That does not mean it doesn't hurt paying $2,000. But outside of that, I also have the spare tire carrier portion I added. I added the Rotopax mount system. Um, and I also added the Ultra Swing table. The Ultra table, I think they call it. And that's the table that drops down so you have additional prep space, cooking space, whatever it is. So I, I got everything as well as the license plate bracket. So all of that is in addition to just the standard ultra swing. I'm fine by that. I wanted to have all of those things for a purpose because I really don't have a place to carry my gas. I don't wanna put one of those wing, bat wing things on the side of it. I think they're absolutely ridiculously overpriced because they're $500 for a piece of steel that has been powder coated. I understand there's engineering that goes into it, but I still just, I would rather spend an additional $1,500 and get a lot more than $500 and just get somewhere to hold um, a Rotopax. Anyways, enough for my ranting. So that is all the stuff that I got with my rig rigged Ultra Swing. Now, if you're looking to just get something simpler, a more dumbed down version of it without all of those specific attachments, you can also do that. I don't know the price off the top of my head. Um, you would just have to go to their website, click on it and kind of build it yourself. That's what I did and it came relatively fast and it was extremely heavy. And that's another thing that I kind of want to talk about is how heavy the, the item is. Um, it's gotta be with that spare tire on there, 150 pounds easy. So what I would say is if you're going to get something this beefy and you're gonna put your spare tire on it, I would have something in the rear to compensate for that. I never, I bought this and intended to put it on before our trip out west. And when I bought it, I put it on with the spare tire on and I was already sagging. It had my suspension sagging with nothing else in the rear of the vehicle. It is heavy. So I opted to not take it with me. I even ran without a spare that entire trip was something I never ever do, but it's just a heavy item. So if you're gonna put it on the back of your Outback Wilderness, you should probably have a different suspension or at least something back there to compensate for that because you are going to notice um, a pretty drastic difference the second that you put it on. Now, a part of that, like the, the durability of this thing I will say so far it has been really good, but there are a few complaints. Um, you can kind of hear it rattle when you're driving. And my wife noticed it before I noticed it. I literally just got back today. And when you're not going fast down the highway, hitting a bump, you don't really feel anything. But when you're, I pull out of my driveway or I hit a pothole going, you know, 25 or 30 miles an hour, you can hear things moving and shaking. Um, that's probably normal. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but you have to decide if that's something that you're willing to live with because it is not quiet in the vehicle. You can definitely hear that something is rattling around. I've probably shook in this thing 30 times to see if it's coming dislodged or I need to tighten it up 
or if it's just a spare tire that's actually making that noise. So if you're considering something like this, um, I, like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. All the screws are tightened, all the bolts are tightened. I checked everything, but I think it's just, I mean, it just moves. It's impossible for it not to move, and I think that movement causes things to rattle, and you can hear it inside the vehicle. Now, if you do intend to tow with this, um, you will have a 10,000 pound rating coming off of the ultra swing. So the ultra swing goes into the hitch receiver and the ultra swing also has a hitch receiver that you could hook up a trailer, mountain bikes to, whatever it is that you're into, you'll be able to do all of that. Um, so that's something to take note of. I don't know what the other companies boast in terms of how much you can tow with their um, tire carrier installed, but I know that the Ultra Swing does allow you to tow up to 10,000 pounds, and that for me is awesome. I'll never tow 10,000 pounds with a Subaru, but I will also be using this on the Power Wagon, and there is a likelihood that I could come close to that 10,000 pounds when we're towing our boat and we have all of our gear inside the boat. The ease of use portion of all of this, um, it's, it's, not, it's very easy to use. It's a simple design and everything makes sense. But the problem is the lever that you have to pull on, you have to pull really hard and you have to push really hard. And I know for a fact that's all by design because they want everything to stay fastened down and stay super tight so nothing's coming loose. Now you have a pin in the rear that you have to pull out and then you're able to, uh, actually you open the, the handle and then you can pull that pin out. That pin, you put that in and then you shut the handle and that's what locks everything down. I think it's a really cool design. It seems to work well. I haven't had any issues, but my wife is not nearly as strong as I am and it's really, really, really hard for her to get that thing to shut. So much so that she has to like kick it closed. Um, so if that's something you're considering and you wanna go with this setup, you just need to understand that this thing is heavy, it's big, it's beefy, and it is going to be super hard for you to close. Now, opening it up itself, um, it doesn't just come open really easy. You have to pull on it. It's nice and tight. Everything is firm, and I like that. I don't want to open it, and it just swings open because how many times have you been camping in a super windy space, and you have that wind blowing. You don't want your tire carrier blowing all over the place or slamming closed on itself or slamming open. Um, so I am happy with the way that it, it is super difficult to try to kind of move it. Super difficult is probably overstating. It's definitely, you have to put some power, some force behind opening it and closing it. But like I said, I think that's all design. Now, my biggest number one issue with this, and it's gonna be an issue with any spare tire carrier that you get, there needs to be some type of rear camera relocation bracket. Um, or relocation setup. Now, that is something I'm working on now to figure out a way how I can relocate my backup camera. Because as you can tell behind me, you cannot see anything when you put this thing in reverse. Now, for this vehicle, that's fine. It's not a huge deal. I don't love it because I'm used to backing up with a backup camera. You can definitely back up without one. I could back up without one. So for anybody who's gonna leave a comment, that says something about me mentioning needing a backup camera. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying when you're used to having it and then it's all of a sudden gone, it's kind of a shock. So if you're putting this on a Subaru, for me, it's okay on the Subaru because the Subaru is small. The Outback Wilderness is not a big, big vehicle. But when I put this on the power wagon and I'm in a tricky spot and I need to back up, not having that camera is going to be a problem. And it's something that I'm trying to come to terms with of figuring out a way to get that camera out and relocate it elsewhere. That way I can back up without any issues. So rigged, if you do see this and you are listening, some type of relocation bracket um, or s I don't even know because there's so many vehicles that this could go on. That would probably be a huge undertaking. But I think that's going to keep a lot of people from purchasing an item like this is not being able to see out of their backup camera when they go to put the car in reverse. Now, with all of that said, I would purchase this item again. Um, I'm not going to because it's expensive and I'm happy with the one that I got, 
But if I, I needed one and I had to do this all over again, this is the best setup that I've seen. With all of the attachments, now that I've had my hands on it, feeling how rugged it is, feeling how heavy it is, made in America, engineered here, all of that stuff matters to me. So I think this product is great. There are gonna be some drawbacks. It is going to make noise and it is going to rattle. Um, it is super heavy, so you're going to need to compensate for that or you're gonna be driving down the road all sagged out. Um, but I do believe that the product itself is put together in an appropriate way. And for the price, it's, it's not much more expensive than the competitors, but you get a lot more. So with all that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching. Um, if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe so you can come along for more adventures, and I'll see you on the next one.